This is the week 12 video on probability odds and gambling. A few important names in the history of probability. Gerolamo Cardano lived in the 1500s. He writes one of the first books on probability and gambling. And Blaise Pascal lived in the 1600s. He developed theories for gambling and economics, risk analysis, and actuarial science, which is uh, probability used in the insurance industry. Thomas Bayes lived in the 1700s. He develops an important results in conditional probability, something I focus on in another video. Let's look at a familiar example for probability. Suppose there's a ball under one of these three shells. What's the probability of selecting a ball? Well, it's one over three. There's three possibilities. One of them has the ball in it, um, so the probability is one out of three. Uh, this could be written as the same as uh, the odds against the selecting selecting the ball uh, as two to one. Because there's two ways you don't and there's one way you do uh, select. Two to one odds means uh, two is the number of ways the event doesn't happen and one is the number of ways the event does happen. Uh, so these are the odds against selecting the ball. It also means that if you bet $1, uh, and if you were right, you would win 2 back, $2 back, in addition to your $1. Now, if we had odds 2 to 1 against, you could also say the odds are 1 to 2 in favor. So when you're saying odds in favor, you put the number of ways it could happen first, and the number of ways it doesn't happen second. Right? So 2 to 1 against. Uh, two ways it doesn't happen, one it does, and one to two in favor, one way it happens, two it doesn't. Now suppose you're given odds of three to one against, what's the probability? So three to one, I add those together, that's four total possibilities. So the probability of this event would be one out of four total. One out of four, that's 25%. Uh, so you could write the probability in any of one of those three different ways. 20, one quarter, 0.25, or 25 percent. Now as another example, uh, if you can take one card from a standard deck, what's the probability of selecting a heart? Well there's 13 hearts in a standard deck out of 52 cards, so 13 over 52, that's one quarter. One quarter is 0.25 and that's 25 percent. So my probability for selecting a heart is one fourth, 0.25, 25 percent. Now compare the probability with the odds against selecting a heart. You see the odds against would be three to one. There's out of four possibilities, there's three ways you don't get a heart and one you do. So odds against selecting a heart, three to one against. Okay, say the probability of winning a game is 80%. What are the odds against winning? Well, if it's 80% out of 100, there's 20 ways I don't and 80 ways I do win, so that's 20 to 80 against. We don't leave it this way. We could divide both by 20, both of those by 20, so that's 1 to 4 against. Uh, one way it happens, 4 it doesn't. You can see I could check this by adding together. 1 plus 4, that's 5. So the probability of winning is out of the total 5. There's 4 ways you win out of 5, and 4 divided by 5, that's 0 0.8, that's 80%. So 1 is the number of ways you don't win, 4 is the number of ways you do win, uh, and that's 1 to 4 against. Now how about this one? The probability of winning a game is 60%. So there's 40 ways you don't win, 60 ways uh, you do win out of 100 total. Again, I can divide both of these by a common factor. In this case, I can divide them both by 20. So if I divide 40 by 20, it's 2. 60 by 20, that's 3. So there's two ways I do win. Uh, I mean, sorry, two ways you don't win, three ways you do win. So checking this again, probability of win, well, there's three ways to win out of a total five. That's 0.6, that's 60%, same thing. Okay, suppose my favorite team has a 10% chance of winning a game. What are the odds against my team winning? So out of 100 total, there's 90 ways they don't win and 10 ways they win. Uh, so that's 90 to 10 against. We can divide both of those by 10, so that's 9 to 1 against. Now suppose my favorite team has a 90% chance of winning a game. What are the odds against my team winning? 
well, there's 10 ways they don't win, 90 they do win, that's 10 to 90 against, 1 to 9 against. If you'd further divide both of these by 9, you get 0.11 to 1 against. Another example, the probability of winning a raffle is 1 over 500. Suppose there are 500 raffle tickets and there's only one winning ticket. What are the odds against winning? Well, there's 499 ways you don't win and one you do. That's 499 to 1 against. Take another example here. The odds the Eagles win a game are 2 to 1, meaning 2 to 1 against. What's the probability they win? Well, 2 to 1 against means the probability the Eagles win. If there's 2 to 1, that's 1 plus 2 total possibilities is 3. 1 over 3 means 33% chance of winning. This also means that every dollar bet on the Eagles, if they win, would give you back 2 in addition to the $1 that you bet. Horse racing still uses the format uh, 2 to 1 odds, but the other major sports like football and baseball uh, and basketball, instead of saying 2 to 1, uh, the odds are written plus 200 in this example. Plus 200 means 200 to 100 against. Writing odds this way is called the money line form. For example, plus 150 means 150 to 100 against. That means every $100 bet, if the bet wins, brings back 150 in profit in addition to the $100 returned. That ratio is the same as 1.5 to 1, so every $1 bet would, turn, would, would return $1.50 plus the $1 that was bet. A minus 20, I mean a minus one, 120 means uh, you put the 100 first. 100 to 120 against, that means every $120 bet would return back $100. Uh, but you could also divide both of these numbers by 120, and that gives me 0.83 to 1 against. So every $1 bet, if the bet wins, pays back 83 cents in addition to the $1 bet. So now you can see the plus is uh, an underdog, the minus is a favorite. For example, a plus 150 is 150 to 100 odds against. That means 100 ways the team wins, 150 they don't. So 100 over 150 plus 100, that's 100 over 250, which is a fraction 2 over 5, which is 0.4 in decimal and 40%. So I say, all right, if a team is plus 150, they got a 40% chance of winning, a $100 bet would give me back 150 total in profit uh, plus the 100 bet. A minus 120, that's a favorite. That means you put the 100 first. That's 100 to 120 odds against. There's 120 ways that they actually win out of when I add them together. That's 220. 120 over 220, that's 6 over 11. That's approximately 0.55 rounded to two places. So that's a 55% chance. That's a favorite. There's a 55% chance that that team wins. Um, so let's take this example. The Eagles are plus 115 and the Jets are minus 135. So that 115 means odds 115 to 100 against. So that means uh, you'd have to bet $100 to win uh, 115. You can also write that as 1.15 uh, 1 to 1 odds against. A $1 bet would pay back $1.15. Now the Jets are minus 135, so I put a 100 first. Minus 135 means 100 to 135. So a 135 dollar bet, if they win, would pay back 100 in addition to the 135. If I divide both of these numbers by 135, I get about 0.74 to 1. So I know every one dollar bet, if the Jets win, would pay back 74 cents. So what is the probability that Eagles win at plus 115? What does that mean? So there's 100 ways they win out of 115 total. So the probability the Eagles win is 100 ways they win out of 215 total, 100 ways they win out of 115 plus 100. That's a 47% chance. So they are they're an underdog. The probability the Jets win, and here the the odds on the Jets at minus 135 means the probability the Jets win is 135 ways they do win and 100 ways they don't win. Uh, 135 over 235 is 0.57. That's a 57% chance 
uh, that the Jets win. At least that's what the odds say. If you thought that the odds were greater than that, that would be the bet to take. You notice 47%, 57% is over 100%. Since the odds are over 100% here, that's how the odds maker makes money. If you add 47% and 57%, that's 104%. That's basically saying that for every $100 that's bet on the game, the odds maker makes $4. So let's look at this example. The line for the Bears and Packers game is Bears plus 7.5 minus 110, Packers minus 7.5 minus 110. What does this mean? So the first number, the 7.5, that's the spread. That's the point spread. Um, you could say adding that number onto the final score for that team, uh, you ask, would they win with 7.5 points? Uh, the reason for the half a point is that so that you don't have a, a tie in the bet. Um, Sometimes that can happen. When it when it does, everybody who's placed bets, you just re the money is returned. It's called a push. Um, but um, putting a, a half point there means that 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 can't happen. For example, in a, in a football game, you can't have half a point. So uh, the one side of the bet's going to win for sure. Um, so so put seven and a half points on the Bears' final score. See if they actually win. So uh, on the other side of uh, the bet. Say you want to take the Packers, so if you took their final score and you minus the seven and a half, um, and if they're still winning, uh, then you won with that bet. So you're basically, if you're betting the Packers at minus seven and a half, you're saying you think that the Packers could actually win by more than seven and a half. So these second numbers here, the minus one ten, is basically the money line odds on that particular spread. So they're not always minus one ten for all spreads, uh, but it's very common to have those numbers. Um, so what does that minus 110 mean? In this case, that minus 110 means uh, 100 to 110 against. So the 100 is the ways basically the team doesn't beat the spread. The 110 is the ways that they do beat the spread. So the probability of beating the spread here, um, this particular event, is how many ways it could happen. 110 out of the total, 100 plus 110. So that's 110 over 210. That comes out 0.52. That's 52%. But that's on both bets. So you see if you add 52 and 52, you get another 104. There's about a 4% there. That's the uh, odds maker's way of making sure that they get uh, um, profit no matter what bets are placed. Um, and so you'd, you'd basically be thinking, so if you thought there was a better than 52% chance that the Bears would um, win if you added seven and a half points on their score, then that would be a good bet to take. In another way, you thought that the Packers uh, might win, but they won't win by more than seven and a half points. If the Bears will be within seven and a half, right? If the Bears are within seven and a half, you think there's a better than 52% chance that the Bears will be within seven and a half, so that if you, for example, did add the 7.5, they would actually uh, come out with a higher score. Well, if you thought that the Bears would be within seven and a half, and you thought it was a better than 52% chance, then that would be the bet to take. Uh, otherwise, you'd go on the other side of the bet, take the Packers. If you thought there was a better than 52% chance that they would uh, beat the spread, that means that they would uh, win by more than seven and a half. Uh, maybe, for example, they might win by 10. If you thought that was more than 52% chance that that would happen, then that would be the bet to take. All right, so that's the end of my uh, video here on uh, basic probability and odds uh, and the f and the money line form of odds.